So let's get together and create this incredible necklace set with a beautiful Western vibe. Hey, you guys. So I was looking for some beads to see what I wanted to make today or what we wanted to create. And I have um, these bead organizers that I got from, well, craft organizers. I got these from either Walmart or Michaels a really long time ago. So I found some necklaces that I used to sell. Y'all had some crazy prices on these things. And this is one of my old business cards. So what I realized is that I'm gonna cut these necklaces. It was a three strand necklace. But what I'm gonna do is I wanna reuse these beads to make something else. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna cut them off the strand. They have this really pretty center stone, which is almost like a jade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the string and oops, I fell in the wrong place and put them back in the bead holder so I can use them to make something else. So that's what we're doing today is I want to make a choker project. I have those accidentally fell in the wrong place, but I want to make a choker project. So I'm taking off these beads and this string. I'm going to put that over there. And this is how you can recycle, you know, a lot of the projects that maybe you had before that you either had and didn't sell or you didn't like exactly how they turned out. I'm trying to get that over there. And then you can reuse the beads to do something else. So I have those. And then I was gonna buy some black beads and something was like, don't be going to buy black beads. Like, cause I remember one time I bought a whole bunch of smaller beads so I could make stuff with them. And I actually found these. So I'm gonna make room and put them in here as well. But I think cutting them off might be a little, might be a little tricky. Cause then when I go to try to pick them back up, they're so tiny. But I just wanted to share with you just some beads that are currently in here. There's some really pretty ones in here as well. Look at those. Those are really pretty. And then there was this bag. Now this, this strand has been cut, so be careful how I pull those out, but look how pretty they are. I love when you go to like the wholesale bead shows, they have a lot of their semi-precious stones on this really pretty string. So these are all different jade beads um, that I'd love to make something with. I think those are really pretty. These are tiger eye and they're faceted. Look how beautiful those are. So I just thought I'd share some of these with you as I'm trying to formulate my idea. Now this string has been cut, so I'm not sure if they're gonna fall off when I pull them out, but look how pretty the purple ones are. They look like um, planets. I think they came out really pretty. Not came out really pretty, but that's just a whole bag of really pretty beads. I'm gonna put those over there, put them back in the bag they were in. And then here's another box with all different kinds. And these are actually teardrop beads. They actually have a hole across the top. Now I haven't used those for anything I wanted to, but I think when I bought them, I didn't realize they were teardrops. And so I'll have to see if they actually fit the string that I wanna put them on because they do have this weird side beads. So that means that they'll hang down like a teardrop. But I like those. I think these are really pretty. I may make something with those. It's only a few things I have in the bead box. And then there was this other one that was out there. I used to try to keep up with the pricing. That's why I had some of the tags, but I just have too much to be concerned with now. So these were handmade by an artist in Raleigh. For some reason, I remember her name, but her name was Elaine Ray. And these were like some fire baked beads. Really pretty. Down here, we have like some black ones that look like obsidian but I'm just making that up, I don't know what they're called. So I really need to take all the beads we just bought the other day and put them in these boxes as well and get kind of organized. And look, there's a bead store in Raleigh and they have all these really pretty brass type filigree features you could use, <clears throat> or components I should say, that you could use to make earrings out of. You could dangle and hang things from there. The same with these. They were just kind of pricey and overpriced that particular bead store. So I don't go there anymore because now you can get so much stuff from Michaels. I ran in there earlier today, but I didn't buy anything. And they were they had their whole bead out at 70% off. So now would be a really good time to go if you think there's some things that you'd like to purchase. I thought these are really pretty. These are like a diamond cut, faceted blue stone. It's almost like a denim blue jean color. So I'm trying to decide if I want to make something out of those. That would be really pretty with this. With those, maybe. Be really pretty with these we could make something kind of Western that's really pretty. So anyway, stay tuned, let's see what we'll create. Okay, so you already know what to do. You cut your length of string to the um, desired length you want to make your choker. I'm just measuring mine around my neck to see how I want it. And so of course you get a little bit more string than you need because you want to have extra to be able to loop back through and have that protective end. And then I've already shown you how to put your crimp bead on so we won't do that part again. Say Tom. So if you haven't seen my other videos, I'll try to remember to link it over where you can see it, but you're gonna need any beads of your choice. You're gonna need some crimp beads and make sure you get crimp beads large enough to come back through um, your design. You're gonna need some lobster claw clasp. 
because for some reason I'm not finding one else to claw close. So remember I was sharing with you that you want to make sure that whatever beads you put on the end, you have to be able to let the tail be able to go back through the beads. Well, because the pearl ones that we're going to be using, the hole is so small, it only allows for a singular strand. So it's not large enough. So we're going to be using these pre-pearl beads that are in like a, um, like a copper color. And we're going to be using these tiger eye beads, which are like round and faceted. They're kind of like oval shaped. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some of those. I'm just going to cut the string. So they come loose on the string. How pretty those will be together. And then we're going to use that center stone. And we're also going to use one of these silver center stones. So it has one like a Western flare. And that's going to be pretty. Just going to start stringing these. And for some of the video, I may just be quiet and let the music play so you can watch me um, come up with the design. And what I do, if I have a bead that doesn't want to let the string go through easily, I have a pointer tool, or you can also use a head pin or an eye pin, because a lot of times it's just a piece of the plastic or the acrylic that they use to make the bead that just got stuck, or if they're a painted bead. So because I know this isn't gonna go through the hole of the pearl, we can go ahead and cut the tail off because we already had three beads that that would fit through. So we're just gonna cut that little tail off right quick. So sometimes I know what I'm gonna create when I start creating, and sometimes I don't. I'm gonna take that a little bit shorter, only because it was, touching the copper bead and it's not going to go through there so I don't want that becoming a hindrance to my design later. So this is what we're starting with and we're just going to keep stringing on the really pretty pearlescent gold colored beads which I normally tend not to like pearl like designs or pearl like beads. I had some in my hand and I was like put them back. I didn't even buy them because I know I don't like pearls too much. Not that I don't think they're pretty. I just think they're kind of antique like and that's not always the look that I'm going for when I'm making jewelry. What do you prefer to work with? So look how pretty that's coming out. And so I really want this one to be really simple, really pretty. And so when we get to the center stone, I kind of have an idea in mind, but this one can be dressed up or down. I think if you have like a really pretty white t-shirt um, that you could wear with some jeans, or you could wear this with a really pretty blouse to work, or at least for your work zoom, since a lot of people may or may not be going into an office or working from home. You know, we always want to make stuff that can be dressed up or down. So that's what it's looking like so far. So I'm going to get a few more of these on here and I'm going to come back when we get ready to do the center piece of what we're creating. Here, I had you a little quicker. Okay, so this is what it's looking like so far. I'm gonna put it on a white sheet of paper so it'll be easier to see. So that's what it's looking like so far. And this is what the center stone, I believe that we're gonna use. So it has like a really pretty pattern to it and it has like a really pretty gloss. So it, it looks like granite almost. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up putting these out to the side, I believe, and let it come together as a design that way. So again, this is gonna be a choker. So what we wanna do is measure out, after we put on a few more of the copper colored beads, we wanna make sure that it's fitting our neck like we want it to. And I have uploaded the other chokers that I created to the website along with some newer earrings. So if you click on and visit our Etsy store, I'm just gonna add a few more of these. You're gonna get a $5 off um, if you follow the link in the description box. So anything you purchase, and then we've reduced a lot of our prices just to make things Super affordable for people that are buying gifts right now. So you can get earrings on there anywhere from five to 10 to $15. So very affordable. And remember what I was sharing with you is that you could always add an extra jump ring to the end. You can add some chain to the end. In case you wanna sell these with an extender, you can do that. I think we're also gonna make a few earrings today. I'm gonna take off one of these beads because I just measured it and it's not gonna be too choker like if I leave that. I think that bead on there, let me check. So that would be good. So let's start with our centerpiece design and see how it looks. For now, I'm just gonna do one bead instead of two and see how I like that. That's really simple and pretty. So let's try two and see how they'll look. Oops, got loose, loose print bead. Let's try two of the tiger's eye and let's see what that ends up looking like. I also may make it just a little bit more decorative by adding one of the little stones we put on the end as a stopper, but that's really pretty. So I don't think I need to add anything to it. Let me just check the length in the center of it. So now here's where you'll want to start counting once you start putting the gold beads back on because you know you got to have an even number of beads in order for it to look right. So look how pretty that looks so far. And that's going to be really, really pretty. So let's put the rest of our copper beads on. We'll be right back to finish up the necklace and then we'll make the second necklace as well. So I'll be right back when we finish stringing. So here we are finishing up the necklace. I'm just putting the crimp bead on. I'm going to put the jump ring on on this end. So we can add the clasp and remember to loop it back through your crimp bead and you want to take your tail of string back through those first three beads at the end. This gives your necklace support. And then remember we're just going to pull it that way. And what we want to do is leave a little bit of give right there on the end 
because you don't want your necklace to be taut and not and all tight and not lay properly and comfortably on the neck. So you have to be careful too. Your print bead, it can be sometimes smaller than the whole opening on your bead. So you gotta catch it sometimes and make sure it doesn't roll back through there. Let's cut the tail off. And then I'll try these on at the end so you can see what they look like. But look how pretty this is. Oh, we gotta put this on. Yeah, I almost forgot we gotta put our little end piece on, the little lobster claw class. So remember, you always wanna open your jump ring up towards yourself. You can use two pliers to do that, but my hands, I've been doing hair for forever. Not now, but I did. And doing this forever, so your hands are probably strong enough to pull it apart. So look how pretty this turned out. This one, what I love about it is how dainty it looks and how professional it looks, but it still could be dressed up or down. I wanna pull it back so you can see it. Look how pretty that is. Let me take you down so you can see it. Really pretty. So we'll put you all back so I don't drop you off the table. And then we'll show a, um, like what it looks like being worn at the end. So let's get the next one made. So again, I wanna be able to use these little buttons because I just like how westerny they look. I'm gonna open those up and this is what they look like. Let's pour them out. They look like little silver buttons and they have like this little western detailing. So this is gonna make a really pretty center stone, but what you could do is you could also let it dangle and make it a drop by running a head pin or eye pin through the center. But because I want mine to go across that way through the center, now maybe we could also make some matching earrings for this particular choker. We'll see as we go along. So I think that I'm gonna use the same colored copper beads that we have because I just kind of like Look how that would look with these. I think that'd be really pretty. So let's sit that one off to the side and let's see how many more of these we have. Now I may not have enough, but I may have some tiny ones that I can add to it. Let's check and see. I'm gonna go count those out. The only tricky part is how tiny these are. <laughs> so they may be a bit of a pickle to work with on camera, um, but we'll do our best. So what I'm gonna do is probably move these off, get a different place. And that way we can kind of keep everything separated and I can put them back in their respective bag. So let's sit these over here and then we'll slide those off. So this is what we're gonna work with. So of course, you know you're gonna need whatever beads you're gonna be working with. You're also gonna need your crimp beads and you're gonna need a lobster claw clasp. So I'm gonna pull that out. And what I'm thinking that we're gonna do next is make a bracelet. And I don't know if we'll make a bracelet to match, but I do think that I wanna make a bracelet today. But I may do that on a separate video just for time's sake and that way this video won't be too long. So let me go get the lobster claw class and the two crimp beads. And we'll okay, so super excited. So look, it's funny that even though these beads are smaller, it was able to double strand go through those for the support we needed at the end. I decided to use these really pretty purple beads at the end. So we're gonna start stringing this one and I believe it's gonna come out super cute. We're gonna see if we can create something with a bit of a Western vibe. And I also wanna see if we can do something that looks kind of denim like today as well, but I'm so many ideas, so little time. You guys, I had my hands on some seed beads at the store and I was like, but the way my eyes are set up, <laughs> and I technically, I do wear glasses, but my glasses are for long distance, but y'all, those beads look so, so small. But I was thinking, I saw somebody making a necklace using the seed beads and they had a beading wire. Um, I don't know how that works, I'd have to look at a video, but I just saw something that was super, super tiny that I really wanted to try, but I was like, uh, I don't know. Do y'all make stuff with seed beads? I mean, years and years and years ago, I tried to. I was like, okay, I'm gonna make jewelry with seed beads. And it was just, they were so little and all over the place and hard to keep up with. And then when they end up on the floor, it's like, I'm not picking them up because how do you even see them, right? So what I would end up doing was just vacuuming them up. And so I was like, okay, that is not gonna work. So that's when I realized, okay, I do like beads to be a certain size or a certain diameter if I'm gonna work with them. So look, this is gonna be really pretty because I just think that with that kind of Western center stone vibe. It's gonna be really petite and nice, and I like that. And that's what we're going for. You could wear this with like a denim shirt. You could do a denim on denim outfit. I love it, I love where this is going. And then you could also, um, some of the beads that I bought last night, we could intermix those to create different designs as well. So I'm just gonna keep stringing these, not gonna bore you. And I'll be right back as soon as we have it where we're gonna add our center. Okay, you guys, so we're right at the middle where we're ready to add our center stone. So I'm gonna put this on the white sheet of paper so you can see it easier. Oops the beads decide they might want to take off and be on a race. So let's see if we need to add some type of accent bead beside it. I don't think so because this is really what I'm going for. I want to have this like coin look in the center. So that's what we're going to do. Look how pretty this would make as a bracelet, right? I'm hoping I can fit on that. Let's see if you wanted to do a, like a simple bracelet, like with the coin in the middle, that would be really pretty. So we're going to do this as a necklace. And like I said, we may create a matching pair of earrings. We'll see what design I'm able to come up with after we finish. And these beads are actually really easy to work with. Oh, I got these from Michaels. I forgot to tell you years ago. No, I'm lying. I got these from AC Moore a few years back. And I just, I think I made some things with them, but it was so many that came in the pack. Cause normally when I'm buying beads, I try to buy two packs at a time only because that way, depending on what you're gonna design, you'll have enough of everything. So that's why I have so many of these. And they came in, they come in pink, yellow, um, 
green, like a fluorescent green, a turquoise blue, black, orange. Did they come in orange? Every color known to man. So I think this is going to be really pretty how it's turning out. And listen, you guys, remember I was talking about you could share these as gifts. And so if you're thinking about some inexpensive gifts that you can make for people, just imagine that if you bought two packs of beads, depending on what you're creating, if you did bracelets, if you did rings, which I've never made beaded rings with string, but you can. I've seen people do videos on them. They just don't interest me. But, you know, so much stuff that you could make for your friends and that you could make, uh-oh, just saw a plant reminder pop up. So, so many different things that you could do. Look how that's turning out. That's coming out really pretty. Let me go check an appointment time, make sure I'm not running late for my real estate client. Okay, so we finished this one. I mean, and these things, I mean, they whip right up. They don't take long at all. So I'm just gonna put the print bead on this side. We're gonna add our jump ring. I'm gonna make a matching pair of earrings just so we can have a completed video. So let me get closer. So we're gonna pull our tail that way and bring it through our protective beads. Hopefully the little beads on this side will be as cooperative as the ones on the other side. Oh, even Boat's excited about it. Yeah, it's just funny to me that the smaller beads actually have holes that are a little bit larger. So that second gold bead didn't, but that's fine. To be able to go through three of them gives you enough security. So let's go ahead and crimp it off. Make sure it matches the other side. So you have a matching set. Make sure your necklace has like some give to it so it falls nicely. And if you crimp too hard, then what'll end up happening is it'll pop the string. So we really want to be careful with that. Let's put our lobster claw clasp on the end. And then I'm gonna show you what they look like together. Sorry about that, guys. Bolt is seeing some. He sees his arch nemesis outside. I don't know if that's a squirrel, a bird, a leaf, or what's going on. <laughs> but look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh. So I am gonna try these on, but let's lay them down so you can see them together. And I just think they came out so pretty. And I'll do a better close-up photo for you as well, right at the end of the video. But I think they came out just really pretty. Let's make a matching pair of earrings to go with those. And then we will call this video a day. I have to run and get the, um, what you're gonna need for the earrings is you're gonna need two of your little tabs. You're gonna need two of your Western style beads. Again, I got these from Hobby Lobby. I bought them yesterday. They were $3.99, 15 pieces come in a pack, and everything was 50% off, so I paid $1.50 for 15 of those sweet beads. And then you can also use the same smaller beads that we had a second ago if they will fit in the head pin or the eye pin. So let me go grab those. Okay, so what you're gonna need is either your eye pin, if you want things to dangle from the earring, then you'll have this little thing here. If you want the beads to not fall off the ends, then you'll have a head pin. So in this instance, we're gonna need both. You're also gonna need some jump rings. And the reason I said we're gonna need both is because I think I want a bead to dangle from the end, so like so. So like if you want a bead to dangle from the end, then you need a head pin. And then if you want to be able to hang that dangle bead from the end, you need an eye pin, so then it'll have something to attach to. You're also gonna need your jump ring, so let me grab a couple of those. And you don't need the larger ones, you can use like a smaller size jump ring. And you're gonna need your ear hooks. And I use the fish hook ones because they were just easier for me to grab out of this bag. There's 20 million of them laying around in this bag because all my stuff fell out when I was moving it one day and I haven't organized it yet. So those are the items that you're gonna need. So two fish hook ear wires, you're gonna need two head pins, two eye pins, and your beads of choice and two jump rings just for the dangles. Actually, I think, don't wanna get one more jump ring. Let's do two more jump rings, so four jump rings in total, because I really want this earring to have a lot of movement. Okay, so let's make these earrings really quickly, relatively quickly. So I'm not sure if the little beads will fit through here or not, so that's what I need to check and see right quick, because a lot of times the beads um, have a small opening. So I noticed that I have two different size eye pins, like that one was a little bit thicker than this one, so fortunately, because of that, it actually fits. So what I wanna do is, you wanna think about what you want your design to look like. So I do think I wanna leave that on the end, but I'm trying to decide if I want them to be long or not. So you can always add more beads. I wanna keep in mind the weight of the earring as well. This is really light. I mean, this feels like paper, that's how light it is. So I think that I wanna add two of the brown beads and then we'll go back and add our silver kind of Western light button bead. We'll put that there. We're gonna put two more of the really pretty gold beads and that's good. So I think that'll be really pretty. 
And now you need to round those pliers. Now we're gonna have to cut that off some because see how long that is. So we're gonna cut that off just a little bit using our wire cutters. And then we're gonna use our round those pliers and we're just gonna bend it forward and bend it back, bend it forward one more time. When we do that, we wanna go ahead and put our jump ring on and close it up. Now the reason why we're putting a jump ring on is because we wanna have movement. You want the earring to have, uh, close it too tight. You want the earring to have like a lot of sway to it. So we can actually go ahead and put our fish hook earring finding on right quick. And you already know you pull that apart. You put the hook part, it won't matter if you put the hook going forward or backward on this earring because there's no front or back to this design. So it'll be fine. And I'm just closing that opening up a little bit, but look how pretty that is. So now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna add the little dangle piece at the end. So we're gonna take our flat nose head pin, right? Notice I said it had that bottom on it. And we're definitely gonna, so we could add one more little bead. Let's see if we wanna add another one just for decoration's sake. We'll leave it like that. And then you wanna cut some of this off because that's way too long, but not so much that you can't make a really great circle because you wanna be able to close it off and it'd be really pretty. So now we're gonna add our jump ring and we're gonna close it up. Make sure it's closed tightly. I just pushed it with the end of the round nose pliers. So we have that little dangle that we created. And now what we wanna do is we wanna take that dangle, open it up, and we're gonna add it to our eye pin on the end of the other earring and close it up. Now what we wanna do is just press down a little bit there. And now look at that earring. How quickly we just threw that together to make a matching earring to go with the necklace. I'm gonna show it to you at the end as well, really well, but look how pretty those two came out together. Oh, they got stuck together. They already like each other. Hey, it's not that enough. So, pretty. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go make the other one. I'll be right back and show you what they look. Okay, so look how gorgeous these turned out. They are really, really pretty, and they were super simple and easy to make. And now in under 10 minutes, 15 minutes max, you have a super cute earring set. I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see what they look like. You have an earring and necklace set for yourself or for someone else. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Like the video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Look how beautiful they turned out. So that's one set. And then, well, that's the only set. And this is the other necklace that we made. So let's scooch that over. And look how pretty that is. And you could probably wear them together. If you wanted to, you could just layer your chokers. I think that'd be pretty. And there you go. Perfect gifts, perfect items you could sell on your site. You guys, so I had to go meet my client, but I wanted to show you that I did wear the earring set. I think it came out completely beautiful. And I love how the little button one is shorter than the other one, but look how pretty they came out. So I really only wore them so I could model them. Like I told you, I was gonna model my own jewelry, right? So I could show you how they look after we created them, but they're gonna be going up on the website. I rarely keep jewelry that I make unless I just completely love it, love it, love it. Let me slow down right here, see if we can get some, so you can see it really good without all the sun in the way. Super cute, I love it. Okay, anyway, I hope you make something completely awesome in our next project. I believe it's gonna be some bracelets, um, but stay tuned, I'll keep you posted. I know it's gonna be something fun and creative, I can tell you that much, but oh, there's a good picture of it. Okay, <laughs> bye you guys, have a great Saturday.